Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. All right, please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to call the meeting to order and would entertain a motion on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, this is a time and place for a public hearing is advertised on the matter of resolution 15-52, approving the mayor's budget ending June 30th, 2016. This public hearing has been postponed from the February 23rd meeting of 2015. Is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Are there any oral protests of this matter? Anyone who would wish to speak against the budget? Could you give your, I'm sorry, your name and address for the record, please? Adam Haywood, 2807 Fifth Avenue. Um, I think you guys are spending too much. It's like a bunch of liberals up here. You need to stop, cut things back, only pay for what government needs to pay. All the welfare and all that other crap needs to go. Thank you for your input. Uh, we don't pay welfare out of here, so thank you. Anybody else? Anyone wish to speak in favor? Uh, seeing no one, what's the council's pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? I uh, come as no surprise that I've expressed concerns with uh, about this budget uh, previously, and, and the non parel noted that uh, spending under this budget increases by 12 percent. Uh, the deficit uh, grows, and the reserves shrink by about two million dollars. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you uh, correctly. Uh, describe the, the deficit spending as obviously not sustainable. And, uh, and you have expressed a concern in your narrative to, uh, to eliminate uh, the budget deficit by controlling expenses. Um, I wish to respectfully point out that you used essentially those same words uh, during the discussion on last year's budget. And the planned increase on spending does not sound like strategy for <clears throat> for cost containment uh, correctly note that the city uh, was cut a break in the current budget uh, by a slight reduction in retirement costs as well as uh, as a holding steady on on uh, health care costs and that changes could have had a catastrophic effect on future budgets should stand as no surprise to a lot of people in this community that their health care costs have been skyrocketing over the past year. And that common sense would suggest that uh, good risk management would begin to prepare for these things, for these uh, eventualities within the city budget. If there's not already a blueprint for reducing expenditures, then to me this kind of begs the question, so how do we plan on uh, closing that that budget deficit and just a short time from now I anticipate this council will be voting to increase sewer fees uh, increase uh, uh, has already been factored into this current budget so the additional revenue essentially has already been spent so what is the plan going forward how are we going to close the, the, the deficit also tonight, we'll be considering a strategic plan for, that will guide our policies going forward through the next year and beyond. 
that strategic plan plainly states an intent to develop new funding sources. In assessing challenges confronting the city, there is no mention, either in the strategy or in any other documents that I've found, that provide for deficit reduction or budget reduction. Rather, reduced revenues are described as a threat. This is not new. Last year's budget narrative described threats to revenue and advocating for a rise in the sewer fees. In this environment, it is unacceptable in my mind that this budget also includes an additional allocation for, uh, for increased salaries to, to this city council. And so, so I, I must reluctantly uh, disagree with this budget. I agreed with it last year based upon the premise that steps would be taken to, to, uh, to reduce uh, the spending, and the deficit spending. And, uh, and I reluctantly uh, will not be fooled again. Okay. Uh, on February 20th, Al Ringenberg sent an email to many residents of the City of Council Bluffs that was titled, Red Ink and Good Times in City Hall. His email intentionally was filled with half-truths and blatantly false statements. I provided Mr. Ringenberg specific detail on this budget, and I'm left to assume that he wrote his article knowing that he was making false statements. I'm only less left to guess. Hey, most certainly was uh, not please don't, false statements. Please don't interrupt me. I am left only to guess his true motivation as to why he would want to damage the reputation of our city government and cause harm to the citizens by providing erroneous information. To provide a comprehensive response to those residents who have asked questions related to his article, in hope of providing clarifications to all council blessed citizens, I will take each and every assertion that he has made and respond to each one individually. Assertion number one, city revenues are expected to increase by 15 million. Thank your toilet and your county assessor. This is an inaccurate statement. The fiscal year 16 budget estimates sewer rental fees will increase $1.3 million and property taxes collected will increase $706,952. This is a $2 million and $3,000 increase, not a $15 million increase. Statement number two, expenditures will increase by uh, to 147,500, increasing spending by 12%, which was just alluded to, over the next year. This too is an inaccurate statement. In the most recent fiscal year, fiscal year 2014 that ended last June 30th, the city actually spent 149 million 800,000. And in fiscal year 15, which is to date still budgeted spending, the budgeted amount is 129 million 900,000. But the city already has budget expenditures that exceed the previously budgeted number of 129 million 900 by an estimated additional 15 million. Those additional expenditures will be brought forward later in this year as a budget amendment increasing the fiscal year 15 expenditures to roughly 145 million, which is comparable to the 145 million I'm proposing. In, in fairness to Mr. Ringenberg, the devil's in the details. Since I prepared a budget this year, and last year Art Hill prepared it, and in past years, there are inherent differences as how that budget was prepared. I included the entire year's estimated annual expenses, and Art Hill tended to rely on the use of budget amendments later on in the year. No one can say what the actual spending for this year, fiscal year 15, which ends June 30th um, of 2015, will be, nor can we accurately suggest knowing what the annual expenditures will be 16 months from now but it's reasonable to say that spending will be similar in the next two years when it was compared to the actual expenditure numbers reported in 2013. Assertion number three, the city is spending more than it takes in and the new budget will grow red ink by almost two million. In the year that was just completed, June 30th of 2014, revenues actually exceeded expenditures by 361,653. The city has at this point established a general fund reserve balance of 21 million, which equates to a, a roughly 4.2 months of operating revenue coverage for general fund expenditures, which in my opinion is prudent fiscal planning. It's the planning that helped us get through the flood. If we didn't have that money in reserve, 
um, we would have not been able to sustain during those times. The proposed fiscal year 16 budget shows an overall 1.875 revenue deficit, not the 2 million that was just alluded to. And that deficit is attributable to a 3.1 million non-cash expenditure related to depreciation in our sanitary sewer system. Mr. Ringenberg was told about this depreciation factor, but apparently the truth doesn't play well in his drama. Where is the money going? It was the question Mr. Ringenberg asked in, in the Ringenberg report. Spending on parks and recreation increased 1.1 million. 550,000 will be spent on Los Fest, was his statement. The line item he references uh, for parks is actually recreation and culture, not just parks. Therefore, it includes the library. Library operations increased 187,800. 550,000 is budgeted for Mr. Los or for Los Fest, but Mr. Ringenberg conveniently omits that private donations will pay the entire 550,000. Corporate Sponsors like American National Bank, ConAgra, HGM, Iowa West Foundation, Southwest Iowa Foundation, to name a few, will cover that expense. The only taxpayer expense involved in Los Fest are the salaries of parks employees as they prepare the site. And by the way, these parks employees are already on the city's payroll. Uh, number two, more money to expand bicycle trails. There is in the CIP program for the bonding that was approved two weeks ago, $864,000, which would be spent on bike trails and expansion of parks like Fairmont Park. And so to a certain extent, there is some truth in that statement, although that $864,000 is amortized over the life of the bonds and won't come out in one fiscal year. $180,000 is the assertion that, this, that the city would spend on an image campaign. There is nowhere in this budget, as Mr. Ringenberg already knows, $180,000 for an image campaign. I had explained to the council in a written narrative that I budgeted $20,000, or slightly more than 10% of the cost to participate in a citywide image campaign, which ultimately should help economic development and tourism, and pay significant returns on that $20,000 in, in hotel motel tax and new property tax development. Assertion number four, money for economic development, uh, 1.1 million for Bass Pro. This again is inaccurate. The city pays toward the property taxes of Bass Pro approximately 787,000 annually, which the, the city then recaptures as TIF revenue. Cost of the taxpayers is, is the cost of the paperwork associated with the TIF processing. Iowa West actually pays the mortgage of 1.1 million. Bass Pro pays rent and the county chips in, and so um, we don't pay 1.1 million towards Bass Pro. 1.5 million, again the assertion, 1.5 million spent on the Mid-America Center operating, and operating losses were $640,000. This too is inaccurate. The MAC operating loss in 2014, which is the most recent year's completed operating loss, was 158,483. In this budget, the city budgeted 300, or I'm sorry, 3.4 million in MAC revenue, 3.8 million in MAC expense. That's a 400 deficit for the fiscal year. In fiscal year 14, the most recent actual, the city spent the 158,483 to cover the operating loss. It also paid Caesars 270,000 in management fee. Um, the uh, Hotel motel tax that the city receives covers 200,000 of that expense. Iowa West um, covers 75,000 and Harris covers 75,000. So 350,000 of that operating loss is budgeted to be covered. The 200,000 the city budgeted is savings and hotel motel tax that is owed to Iowa West that Iowa West has agreed to forego to uh, help with the operating loss at the Mid-America Center. A related but not direct expense was 217,262 that was appropriated for capital improvements um, in, from a capital improvement sinking fund that paid for capital improvements made to the property. Uh, the sixth assertion is the city um, plans to spend 1.3 million to assist a number of housing development projects. I believe this is inaccurate, but honestly, I don't know where the $1.3 million number comes from. The Community Development Department has revenue expenditures 
that total of 2.49 million over and above its annual allocation of TIF payments, which um, for next year would be two, six million, uh, 230,000. Um, these are allocated in, in a prescribed manner um, based on governmental appropriations. They're in their governmental fees. Number seven, don't forget about the $1.4 million rate increase next year um, in sewer rates. Um, while expenditures will only increase 380,000. So a little surplus is always good is the assertion. This is inaccurate. Again, the budget calls for an increase of 1.3 million in sewer fee rental revenue. Um, the sewer maintenance operations have been working on a deficit. So the combination of that deficit and the increased expenditure account for the vast majority of the fee increase. However, the city has set aside some funding uh, to rebuild the reserve account, which has been completely depleted and is not um, fiscally sound uh, funding um, or planning. Number eight, if you had trouble paying debt, consider working for the city. Your pay will be way ahead of the 47,000 per capita income in Council Bluffs. The new budget includes an across, includes across the board 2.5% pay increase. Uh, this is deceptive. Um, but um, it's not fair to, com to compare a per capita income to city employee income. Per capita income includes unemployed residents and underemployed residents in, in the number it reaches. So to say that um, fully employed residents make more than unemployed residents is just a logical assumption. City wages are negotiated through a collective bargaining process and then approved by the council. Um, the impasse and collective bargaining process is always subject to binding arbitration. And Iowa cities haven't had much success disputing uh, bargaining disagreements with an arbitrator since the arbitrator's judgment rationale typically is based on which party is most adversely affected by the decision. So their determination almost always favors employees because in their opinion, cities can just raise property taxes to cover any adverse consequences to the city. Looking at the entirety of negotiating, negotiated wages for next year, um, the average salary increase is 2.5% across all four unions, which represent our city employees. Um, by the way, uh, two weeks ago on Monday, Mr. Ringenberg voted in favor to ratify the, the Clerical Workers Association union contract for next year, giving them a 2.5% salary increase. So maybe you need to ask him for his justification, uh, given his criticism. Uh, his statement number nine, 24 city employees base salary exceeds $100,000. This is a true statement. The city employs attorneys, engineers, accountants, public safety professionals, IT professionals, and human services professionals. City employee hiring competes with private sector employers, and our salaries must be competitive if we want competent employees. The mayor's budget increases his salary a mere $1,700. Again, this is inaccurate. The budget doesn't increase my salary. My salary is set by ordinance and is based on an indices tied to the Midwest Consumer Price Index, not to exceed 2.5%. Next year, it increased 7 tenths of 1%, or a total annual increase of $619 over the annual pay I'm receiving this year. Um, also slipped into the, and, and the final assertion, all, excuse me, also slipped into this budget is a 24% increase for city council. Talk about unnecessary spending. Um, the council plus city council has had one pay increase in the last 50 years. In uh, 1963, the city council was paid $300 per month. In 1995, 32 years later, the compensation increased to $600 per month. Now, after 20 years and no compensation increase, it has been proposed um, that the salary increase to $891 per month. Two council members have openly argued against the pay increase. Mr. Ringenberg wasn't one of them. In fairness to him, he really didn't argue in favor or against the pay increase. Um, we put it in the budget since it's a nominal amount uh, it's a budget increase of $17,400 for the entire city council um, when you include all five council positions. 
and the council can decide at a later date if they want to pursue voting themselves a pay increase. If the council salary bothers you, you need to investigate uh, the rate of pay, sorry, Justin, of county supervisors, which is 5.8 times more than the city council makes. They operate with a budget that's about two thirds of the budget and they collect more property taxes than we do. And they get paid 5.8 times more than the city council members do and they get full health insurance benefits. So the outrage about 24% increase I think is unfounded. May and I'm I? done. Okay, very good. Now, I endeavor to, to point out, and I'll state this as clearly as I can, that every number I have cited, every line item comes out of both the report that I'm holding as well as out of the mayor's budget book. Note that many of, of, uh, of his comments incorporate a lot of data that's not included in the budget book. That's so, not true. So I'll, I'll let that speak for That's it. not true. And we've, well, we've gone through this process before where you throw something out and say, it's here and you don't, everybody can look at it. I, I Again, but, it's online. Please go online. Everything I said is accurate. There is no inaccuracies at all in what I said. I've tried to err on the side of caution and, and say that um, potentially it could be a miss understood because of the way I prepared the budget, but many of it's just out and out right fabrication. Now, Mr. Mayor, you, you asked that you not be interrupted. So I, I would ask for the same courtesy. And and back to back to my point about the numbers is you, you made a point regarding depreciation and that you pointed that out to me. Yes, you did. And what I discovered looking back at last year's budget is that that depreciation number was not budgeted for either fiscal year 14 or in the current budget, but yet those expenses were, were still cataloged. Uh, now, when, when, I think I explained that in that it's how the budget was prepared. The former finance director always did the depreciation factor at the end of June. It's always been the same amount. I just did it up front, um, and so. The mere fact is that there's not a deficit. In fact, there's a surplus overall. What there is a deficit is, is in the general fund, um, which is what we pay our employees with, is why I wrote cautionary comments to the council that we can't sustain um, deficits in the general fund. We do have adequate reserves to do that this year. Um, I asked for some lenience from the council so that I can reevaluate expenses when we get the final numbers for 2015, because budget is just guesstimation at, at what things can be. And so rather than lay people off today, I would rather see how close my guesstimations are based on two years ago's actual numbers compared to this year's actual numbers. And I think um, in that analysis, we've already discovered that we can generate more revenue based on our building permit fees and, and the way we've changed how we, um, how we permit a significant construction project in town. But it's still too early to tell, and so I'd like to, some time to analyze that. So if I may finish my, my comments at, at this point in time, uh, as I said, I, I I leave it to you to go back, look at those budget numbers, not only in the filings that are made to the state that show that our reserves are going down by $2 million next year, also leave it to you to review the, the budget book. And I find it unfortunate when, when I have uh, previously told the mayor, I, I appreciate the difficult position he is in. I I've congratulated him for some moves to, to do some things that, uh, that he's attempted to do in, in this budget. And for, for this to be thrown back with terms of uh, false accusations and falsehoods, uh, frankly, is, is beyond the pale and, and regrettable. And, and I, I would hope that, that we can have good faith disagreements without ad hominem attacks on, on individuals so that we can move forward the best interests of all the taxpayers and voters. I'm, I'm flabbergasted at the outrage that of a, a person that mails out an email that says 
red ink and good times in City Hall. Does free speech in, in offend you, Mr. Mayor? Um, falsehoods, blatant falsehoods that damage the reputation of the city does offend me. So if I disagree... My mother you, told me at one time that the one thing you have that no one can take away from you is your credibility. And God bless my mother's soul, she was wrong when she said that because falsehoods and, and uh, misrepresentations can do the same thing. And so it's incumbent on me to set the record straight that that article had um, of 30 assertions, maybe two I could say were accurate. Um, and so it's, it's important, I think, that I bring it forward, that citizens know members of this council's credibility is on um, the line here. They've been contacted. They can't believe that people that contact them can't believe they do this or that. Again, um, and I know you're not an accountant, you're an attorney, but it's the, the reduction in reserves is the value of our city's sewer system. It's a $3 million depreciation, which is a paper transaction. It doesn't have anything to do with cash. You can't spend it. Um, and so the, when you say there's a $2 million reduction in reserves, that is not an accurate statement. There is a $1.875 million reduction in, and that's not even true. There's a $3.1 million uh, depreciation reduction in the sewer system. Overall, there's a $1.875 million deficit and when you add back the 3.1 million, you have a surplus. In 2014, which was the first half year I was in office, we brought the budget in with a surplus. This year, it's too early to tell. We'll see what happens. But, but to say that I lied last year and said I'd manage spending, and I'm lying again no. this year, and you can't support the budget, that's just not a fair statement. I, I have never accused you, nor will I ever accuse you, of lying. You sat false. here last year and told us, Mayor, and you didn't do it. Well, I did do it. Very well. Well, I'd like an opportunity to just speak to this because I have received emails, and this is what I want everybody to know, is that um, it's hard to believe from the emails that I'm getting and what I've read that there wasn't some intent to give half the truth because this is my budget book, and I'll share it with anybody. All of those tabs were what I had to do to track what all these costs were because there's revenues that offset the expenses. And so when I started getting the emails that directly came from the Ringenberg report, what it was is it was willing to tell you that we spent all this money on the Bass Pro but neglected to tell you that the revenues covered those costs, that that wasn't your taxpayer dollars. Um, and there was no mistake or misunderstanding about the money being spent on Lust Fest. That had been made very clear to the council. It was in the notations in the council minutes. So yeah, if you want to say that in the budget there's $550,000 for Lust Fest, that's true. If you want to neglect to tell the people that there's also donations for every penny of that in the budget. I was very frustrated to get emails saying that I had raised, you know, that we had raised our council pay. There's never been a vote on that. Um, when the discussion came up, I was against that. And I will tell you that Councilman Ringenberg never said one word. He didn't say he was against it. He didn't say he didn't think that was a good idea. He sat quietly because he knew he could put that in the Ringenberg report. And my frustration is, is that when I'm getting these emails from people, they truly believe what they got in that report. And then it gets sent out. It's being sent out in mass amounts by other groups. So everyone who gets it believes it, and there's just nothing in there that is the full truth. You take a bunch of half-truths and put it on paper, and it makes it look like we've got a bad budget, like we're not managing the money. And don't believe for one minute these were accidental. That report, it was with intent that the rest of the story wasn't told. So anybody who has questions, please contact each of us individually. I will share my book with you. I will show you where it's all at. And so, you know, to say all those numbers are in there, you can look at the budget, you're right, they are, all are, they are all in there. And so are the revenues that cover these items. So there's a lot more to the story. So don't just believe this report when you get it. Reach out to the rest of the council people, go to the library or go online and read the budget and look 
for the cross-referencing items that are the revenue for those items? When, uh, when the issue of the additional number for the council salaries was, uh, was discussed amongst council members, there was some discussion about the timing of a vote to increase the council pay and when that vote had to be taken in order for it to become effective at the beginning of 2016. And what that tells me, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and I was listening very carefully, that there, is a, that there was some intent to put that additional revenue in here, let it be approved as part of the budget, and then later on in the year, without, without discussion on, on the budget, to then take up the, the issue of the pay increase. I'm just expressing concern that at a time when we are asking for more and more contributions from the taxpayers that we're making an additional uh, appropriation for salary revenues. Well, it certainly explain there was that discussion and that discussion certainly uh, revolved around how the city council would go about a pay increase. And so that you know what that discussion is, the city council cannot vote themselves a pay increase. They can vote future city councils a pay increase. So when Mr. Ringenberg alludes to there was discussions about timing, the discussions were if, if it got voted in this year, when would it go into effect? It would not go into effect until the new council gets seated on January 1st, which would be six months into the year. And so that was important to me if I put it in the budget because I wasn't budgeting the entire 17000 I would be budgeting half of that since half of the budget year would be over with. Again, a budget is an estimation. I want to be the most conservative estimator um, so that we don't get surprises. And so, um, again, the goal is to err on the side of caution. So I included it. Nobody asked me to include it. I included it of my own volition of half a year's increase in case the council decided they wanted the increase. Again, two people spoke against it. One spoke in favor and two others expressed no opinion. So there was not a majority. If three had said we're against it, there would have been a majority. If three would have said they're in favor, there would have been a majority. There was no majority. Um, I cautiously budgeted the increase um, so that we didn't end up short if the council decided it should get an increase. And again, we are talking about the entire council for the entire year, $17,000. Um, and and it's the, would be the second raise in 50 years. There's one more thing I wanted to add to about the increases for city employees. You know, it is a difficult position since I've been on this council because I didn't understand it five years ago when I came on the council, you know, how the union contracts were negotiated and just how little um, you can do, you know, if you go to mediation. But I guess I'd like to say one thing. It was like 2.5%. And it's my understanding that, you know, retired government employees, uh, retired military, that even their retirement pay gets a COLA, which is a cost of living increase, that I understand this year was like 2.6%. So I find no, it interesting. Not even close. No? What was it? Because I, I did Google it. I, I believe it was just south of 1%. That's the letter that 1%. I got. 1%. That's the letter that I got. Okay, well, I, you know, we can make some phone calls and find out what it was. But Check yourself out. your taxes pay for cost of living increases for government employees who aren't even government employees anymore. So I just want you to keep that in mind that the people that just got this increase, they're actually still employed. They go to work every day, they do a good job, they get a, they get a raise. Your taxes still pay for people who aren't even employed by the government anymore to get increases every year. So, you know, I, I find it interesting that somebody would vote in favor of the contract and then put in their report that, you know, the city did this terrible thing by giving this pay increase. I just, it, it's really frustrating when I read these reports because it looks like the intent is to make the council look like they're <laughs> dishonest or to make the mayor's budget look dishonest. And it's, it's very clear that the money, is, there's no big suck of money sitting around. There's no $3 million. One of the emails I got indicated there was $3 million in the budget that we didn't need. 
you can't continually not raise your levy and not and you have increases just like in your household you know if the city wasn't doing a good job you would see these levies going up but you haven't seen that is this 10 years 10 years you haven't seen your levy go up the only way that can be accomplished because property values haven't increased that much is to do a good job and to do a good job at containing costs so i i want everybody to understand that and again email me with your questions i'd be happy to answer them i, I would like to add <coughs> excuse me the um and this is this is something that I've said in in past um, budget years, that during my time on the council, we've I believe that the city staff has done a pretty darn good job of living within our means. Um, Ten years without a, a a levy increase, and we talk about salary increases, but the component that has not been mentioned yet is okay. You have you have a salary increase because that's what's bargained for but there's a give and take on both sides. So the city has come out ahead in some of the health care costs. Um, when I first started on the council, the health care that was on a flat fee, they paid $5 or something. Uh, it was a ridiculous amount that, that they were paying for health care. And it took us years to get all of the unions, and I believe all of the unions now, are a percentage base. So it's those kind of things that the city has continued to do year after year um, but it takes time and we are living within our budget and we're trying to do the best we can without raising taxes. So I think that once again, you know, the city staff has done a heck of a job. And, and a budget is a plan um, <clears throat> to, the, to the council salary, whether action is taken on that later or not. Nobody knows if it, if it will or it won't, but it's a plan. You've planned <coughs> it, it, it does. If it goes unspent, it goes unspent. It's, it's very simple. I mean, I, I don't think this budget is very different than budgets in the private sector. When I do my own budgets, I budget for expenses that, that may or may not ever occur. And you come in under budget or over budget. That's just, that's just how budgeting works. Well, with regard to the general budgeting process, it's complicated. It takes a lot of time. It's not terribly glamorous to, to look through it and to determine how to allocate. So I can't imagine how much less glamorous it is to write the first draft. It takes a lot of time. We have to pay for things. <coughs> Sewers have to flush. Roads have to be built and maintained. Now, could things be better? Yes. I, I hear a lot of times folks say, well, this is horrible, or this is that, or this is that. We're an older city with 300 miles of roads, which means we have 600 miles of linear miles of gutters or curbs. We have to maintain them with a property base that continues to go up one to two percent a year maybe with costs if you know at the store i don't have to tell you they're going up to buy the materials more than that but yet we've kept the levy uh, in fact my uh, three years on the council it's gone down <coughs> about 0.54 percent over those three years do i wish we could do even more yes but the streets have to work the lights have to work the parks have to be mowed. We hear a lot from folks about how they want it to be better. We have to pay for it. This is, again, not glamorous work. There's a lot of unsung work in this that it's, it, it is a lot easier to look at something in isolation and say, aha. <coughs> but I think you have to look at the whole picture. <coughs> and I think if you look at the whole picture, you'll see that if you look at other cities across the country, surely, but even across our state in the metro area, how many other places do you know where the tax rate hasn't gone up in 10 years? <coughs> how many other places do you know that it gets awards for its parks and continues to expand the millions of dollars? We just got an award this past week. How many other places do you know with people like we've got? I think we've got a really good town and you know, it's, it's really easy to talk down government. This isn't Washington, though, and I'm glad it's not. Uh, we've got a good city and a good group of people, and I'd like to focus on the positive things and in, in, in working together. And, you know, out of all those issues, I really don't want to get into personalities, but the one issue that, that I have gotten a lot of comments about, and, and by the way, I always post my uh, questions I get if, if people give me permission to do it, of course, 
and in my answers on Facebook or on my web page, mostly on Facebook. And, uh, and I don't think I can ever be accused of saying something that's politically popular. I say a lot of times things that aren't probably in my own best interest, but they're what I believe. And when people ask me a question, I give them an honest answer, not what they want to hear, always. Uh, and on the salary one, I've, I've been very clear that I believe that traditionally, until 1965, you served for free. And that's fine, but if you look at traditionally who was able to serve, there was a very, very, very small percentage of people who were, were even phys uh, financially able to serve because you basically, it was a rich man's hobby. We always talk about how we want more people involved in government. We want good ideas to come from anybody who's got a good idea, not who can afford to have a good idea. And you know, so, some of us are in a position to, 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 to give it back. And you know, to the extent that an increase, somebody doesn't want it, other folks need it. This job, if you do the amount of hours, you'll see it's actually less than minimum wage. But if, if anyone has a difficulty accepting it, they can do what I do, and I give every penny back to the community. So if someone who has a problem with it does, I'd encourage that person to also give it back. And, and thank you, Mr. Watson. I appreciate that. And I, I have given it back. <coughs> I'm Act, glad to hear I, it. I gave about $12,000 to charity last year. Very glad uh, to hear it. Off of my uh, retirement income. Now, I've heard now three times the fact that the levies have not been raised in 10 years. The two largest levies that this city relies upon are capped. They cannot increase. They are capped by state law at a certain percentage rate. So to, to, uh, to congratulate the city for, for not raising tax levies above the permissible cap strikes me as, as rather odd. This helps to explain why the city in its narratives and its strategic plans and its discussions refers to looking for additional revenues through fees. And so I would, I would ask the kind citizens to stay tuned in future weeks and months as the possibility of new fees is brought before this council. Um, again, some misstatement of truth. Uh, there are 10 levies under which the city operates. The largest levy is capped by law. That's what's commonly referred to as the 810 levy because the maximum amount you can collect is $8.10. Its real name is the regular general levy. The second levy that's capped is the emergency levy. That is 27 cents. Um, and so I'll go down the levies. You'll find that it is the said, lowest. Uh, I just said two. You said the two largest. Yeah. So um, this year for transit, the levy's 31, 0.859 cents, higher than 27 cents. The airport, 27 cents, equal to 27 cents. Liability and property, 70.534 cents, higher than 27 cents, which is the one that just was alluded to as the highest levy. Egg property, $3.375 cents. Again, the emergency is 27 cents, which is the one that's capped. Uh, police and fire retirement, a dollar, uh, 76.983 cents. Uh, FICA and IPERS is, is 93.674 cents. Other employee benefits, $2.92.95 cents. Um, the utilities levy is $2.00. 0.465 cents, and the debt services levy is $2.45. So to say that the two highest are capped and the city shouldn't be congratulated for holding the levy steady, again, it's just not an accurate statement. There are 10 levies, and eight of those can be increased or decreased. Two are capped. One is the largest. One is the smallest. They're not the two largest levies. So. I'd like to call the question. 
Second. Is there a discussion? Haven't we had enough? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, and now uh, a vote on the motion to accept the mayor's budget. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign? Nay. Mm, for those at home, because they often say they can't tell how the vote went, the vote was four to one. All right. Uh, this is the time and place for a public hearing as advertised on the matter of resolution 15 69, approving the plans, specifications, form of contract, and cost estimate for the Hazel Street wall repair, fiscal year 16 21. Is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to speak in regards to this matter? My name is Christopher Patino. I live over here at 505 South 6th Street. Now, has your town ever heard of what's referred to as a hardship grant? For property taxes? Not just for property, but for entire city taxes and thereof. That, I, I'm not sure, Christoph, exactly what you're alluding to, but the, the county supervisors do grant hardship property tax deferment, I think is the now, right way to put it. They don't another waive way it, go. but it, can, it would stick with the property until such time as you sold it. And there is one thing y'all can do, since y'all are a small town and y'all are having fiscal problems right now. If you go to whitehouse.gov, y'all can actually request for a federal hardship grant from this website. You go online right there, it goes directly to where it says, 1600 Pennsylvania, and they will ask for uh, specific information. When you send this to them, they will <coughs> be able to grant you just that, especially when, since you have the numbers to back what y'all need to do. And that will pay for the Hazel Street wall repair? I'm confused. Yeah, yeah it could pay for a whole lot because when you send in these numbers, letting them know that your town hasn't been able to do so much for so long, they will be able to answer all this for you right at this website. All right, thank, thank you. And then go ahead, send all those paperwork in, send your plans and everything else into whitehouse.gov, and then you will get a response back probably 24 to 48 hours with information as to what all you can do. Thank you so much. The, the, the topic we're on right now is the Hazel Street wall repair, and but thank you for the input, and we'll make note of that. Appreciate it. Thank no you. No problem. Anybody else wishing to speak in regards to the Hazel Street wall repair? Seeing none, what's the council's pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, this is a time and place for a public hearing as advertised on the matter of resolution 15-70, approving the plans, specifications, form of contract, and cost estimate for the South First Street Neighborhood Rehab Phase 6 project, fiscal year 16-12, is proof of publication on file. It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to speak in regards to the um, South First Street Neighborhood Rehab Phase 6 project? <coughs> that closes the public hearing. What's the council's pleasure? Motion, motion approved. Second. Discussion. Uh, the city engineer provided, and you know, it's, hopefully I can hold it steady enough. I don't know if the camera can come in on it or not, sorry. Um, this is the South First Street area. You'll see f here's the first and then becomes Madison. These show the different phases of, this is the part of the original plat of the city, which dates to 1853. And a lot of these roads date to the early part of the 20th century, if that. And what your local option sales tax, sometimes called LOST, local option sales tax, that's the shorthand for it, um, goes towards, there are two big areas right now. I think a lot, I get a lot of questions about this. I think my colleagues probably do as well. Um, the two areas that are currently being focused on are the South First area, You'll see these are areas that have been done or will be done in the next year or two, well, three years or so. And then um, the other area is Lower Bennett around Abraham Lincoln High School. We, of course, it's based on need, it's based on trying to get different areas of town, trying to get that efficiency of doing this area all at once so you don't inconvenience people because it is a big inconvenience when it's being fixed. They 
of course you want a new road, but it, you know, it takes, it, it's an inconvenience if it's closed for a long period of time. So it's all planned out. It's all, it's all used through your local option sales tax, which is one of the few funds we have other than the gas tax from the state to pay for the roads. That's the predominant funder of the roads. And I, and I don't think people realize the limited pot of money we have. And do we fall behind in, in roads? <coughs> yeah, we do. Um, the only way to get ahead of it would be to increase taxes, and we haven't. We're trying to do the best we can with what we've got. And I think they're based on planning it and, uh, and doing it based on need and, and in a strategic way. I think we're getting the biggest bang for our buck we can, and I commend it. Any other discussion? Um, this might be something good to put on the website so people can reference it and see mm. exactly you know, what phase will affect where they live. Is that possible? I believe so. That would be great. It, and same thing. I mean, Nate puts stuff on Facebook. I do. If anybody wants a copy, I'm sure we'll both have it on our Facebook mm -hmm. by tomorrow or so, so you can always look online. <coughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, Madam Clerk. Ordinances on third reading. Ordinances amending Title V sewers and Title II revenue and finance, Chapter 2.08.050 fees and charges in the schedule of fees as authorized in Title V. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Is that for both of them? Yeah. Oh, it was? I'm oh, sorry. Better read the we other can back one. It up. I, yeah. was, I was planning it for both, but yeah. we can just do it for A1. Yeah, you read A, but yeah, you I, read. I, I took it as both, too. But yeah, I, I took it as both. We could both. separate them okay. out. If we could. Okay, then that was for Ordinance 6228, Ordinance 6227, amending Title V sewers, Chapter 5.05. Definitions and abbreviations and chapter 5.10 general restrictions by amending sections 5 5.05.010, 5.05.020, 5.05.040, 5.10.040, 5.10.110, 5.10.110, 5.10.110, 5.10.110, and 5.10.150. I, I, I hesitated on, on that last vote because I was confused as to what it was that we were doing because I, I am not voting for for a one for, for the fee increase uh, I, I wanted to make that quite clear I voted against that twice before and I intended to tonight but I did intend to to vote for a a two <coughs> so I, I apologize but I was thrown off by by that sequence Dick what's the proper procedure vote? I thought we were voting on both of them. Amend the, since we request that the uh, clerk amend the minutes to reflect that. Yeah, I make that request then, please. So on A1, the vote was four to one. Um, yes. And then uh, we have not yet voted on A2. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Did we have a motion on that? Sure. To, to, uh, moved. Oh, we did not we have did a, not we did not have a motion. No, we had a motion on the oh. first one, I guess. So. It was just Al correct, having uh, the record corrected. All right. H have we done the first one? Yeah, correctly? that one we did. So yeah. back that up. We've had two votes on, on those two. Orders. Rewind the tape, <laughs> Marie. <laughs> um, do we have so, a motion? Okay, so I would make a motion on A2. Second. To approve. Discussion on A2 in the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Thank you. Thank you for that. You bet. Resolutions, resolution 15-71, authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement on behalf of the City of Council Bluffs with the Metropolitan Area Planning Agency, MAPA, for the Heartland Regional Compact. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Uh, we had a presentation at study session. Uh, earlier today and I, uh, I thank the, the gentleman for coming in and, and making that, that presentation and, uh, and I ask that we delay action on, on this resolution until uh, next week so that we have a better chance to uh, study over uh, the underlying documents which are 
fairly voluminous, as well as uh, as get a uh, a legal reading on some questions. Uh, we're at that point now where we're where we're voting on the resolution. Nonetheless, uh, you know, I I, uh, I I accept the fact that. Um, I, I accept the fact that people have, uh, have put these materials together in good faith and that members of the council uh, want to move forward on, on this in, in good faith. And, uh, and I, in good faith, have, uh, have some concerns uh, about the compact as well as the, the, underlying, uh, the underlying document. And, uh, and in the action steps, it, it, uh, it, it asks that we, uh, that we sign this compact and it says by signaling agreement with the Heartland vision, goals, outcomes, principles, and commitment to work together. And it goes on. At the bottom, so, so we're agreeing to a set of words here that we agree not only with cooperation, but desired outcomes for the future that will help guide policy decisions of, of the city. Uh, as I go through, there are some words uh, in this vision document that frankly, caused me some concern. Uh, at the bottom of, uh, of page four of the vision document, uh, it says, and it's in bold print, uh, the Heartland needs a growth model that is driven by equity, just and fair inclusion into society. So I wonder if this is a development document or a social justice document. Page eight goes on to say, and I quote, collective impact is a model of working together across sectors on complex, large-scale social issues. So again, I ask: Is is this a is this oriented towards development of our of our area? Uh, and and outcomes for the action plan. Outcome 4.5 proposes a strategy that asks us to support programs for integrating new arrivals, including immigrants. And this will come at some cost, not only to the city, but as to the, the, the region as a whole. And I think we have, need to have a serious discussion about these costs and who is going to bear the costs before we proceed with these action plans in the, in the future. So while I appreciate the good faith of those who have put together this document, I think we need to slow down and have a more detailed, serious discussion about where we're headed with this, not only as a region, but as a community, because MAPA is a, is a intergovernmental body that is making decisions that have not been elected by the voters and the taxpayers of this community. So for that reason, I think we need to be very cautious and inquire as to the legal authorities for doing this compact. Well, Just, but, and you may have questions for him, but Greg Reader is trying to point out that Greg's new here from MAPA and that, that um, we do allow people to speak from the public if you do decide you want to do that. So Greg was saying make sure Greg knows that. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council. I'm Greg Ewell, the Executive Director with Metro Area Planning Agency, MAPA. Um, I'm not going to rehash my entire presentation that I gave this afternoon. Um, we do have a couple uh, participants from the steering committee here that uh, would like to speak on behalf of the uh, project. I will, I guess, briefly uh, speak to the points that were raised uh, as far as this is a social justice document. And I would say one of the things that we looked at is as we grow into the future, uh, and in particular, as we looked at where the most significant portions of population growth in our region are coming from, they're coming from low income and low educational attainment area segments of our population. So uh, I think that is part of the economic development strategy and recognizing that if we don't reverse some of those trends uh, across every single racial and ethnic group from 2000 to 2010, poverty increased uh, quite significantly. So. Um, is, is in recognition of that, that, that those are issues that they were going to impact our, our ability to grow in the future. So, uh, but we believe that probably in 2050 is an opportunity to work together uh, across county lines and across state lines to try and address some of those issues and be more proactive as government. So 
I, I had a question for you, if I, if I may. Sure, certainly. Uh, earlier today, you said that if we proceed in accordance with this, uh, with this plan, that you would expect budgetary savings for the region of about $5 billion. Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, what, what is the statistical basis? What, what, what's the source of the data that, that you have used to arrive at that number? Right, that, that is based on some modeling that was done uh, through the Heartland 2050 process and it uses software uh, to look at uh, future development plans. And so you can look at uh, basically the overall, it's a, it's a big picture number of total public funds. So that takes into account roads, water, sewer, parks, and, and other funds that are, are a, cover, a community has to cover. So what was, what was the source of the data that was being modeled? The source of the data would had came from all the local governments that, and throughout the eight counties, based upon what they've been spending or what they expect to spend. The source of the forecast is that what you're asking? Well, I, I guess what I'm, I'm asking is is what numbers were available to you? What, were those the numbers that they're already spending on certain policy budgetary issues, or that they expect to be spending in the future? Right, so we took a look at the way we've grown over the past 30 to 40 years and, and based on the experts that worked on this, forecasted that out. If that, those trends continue and, and what are the anticipated costs of those? Again, working in collaboration with a lot of the staff from the local governments, we received data. Uh, MAPA worked on some of that data. There was also uh, proprietary sources for some of the forecasts. Woods and Pool is, is one of the companies that provides population forecasts that we used in, in some of the uh, outer ring counties of the of the eight county region okay and, and who are these experts that were extrapolating this data these would be uh the members of the project team the consultants that work on this economists planners and, and other professionals i appreciate yes. your your answers all right and so i'll now introduce uh, dr dan kenny uh president from my western community college Dr. Kenny, can we get your name and address for the record dan kenny 23008 breckman's road council bluffs and uh, yes, I was on the steering committee and there are just a couple things that I'd like to address. One is that there is no intent that this 2050 plan uh, will take any prerogatives away from any local government. In fact, it's very clearly stated in the document that the cities and counties within this region will maintain local control. This is an effort to get organizations to work together collaboratively for the betterment of the whole region, which includes nine counties, three in Iowa and six in Nebraska. One of the things that the steering committee did, and that gets to your question a little bit, is, is that there were approximately 75 citizens from this region that were a part of that steering committee. And uh, those people all had expertise in different areas. And then we did bring in some experts to assist with parts of it. Uh, and we modeled some of what Salt Lake City had done with their plan. And if you've been to Salt Lake City, you see that they've had a tremendous result for their region, not just the city of Salt Lake. And so the, the data in the plan, there was expertise in each of these areas. For example, in the area of education, the collaboration has already started. Uh, we've been having some meetings and we're beginning to move forward and address the issues. One of the, the sections that you were probably reading from, Mr. Ringberg, was the area dealing with poverty. And it's amazing of all the data that we collected, and that was one piece of the data, was where is the poverty? And certainly, there are certain parts of the metro area that people would point to and say, this is where poverty exists. But what's surprising, when you look at the whole nine counties, the dots aren't as big, but poverty exists in a lot of places. And one of the things that we have to do with economic development, with education, is that we have to address poverty if we're going to change things in this economy and for the people that live here. And so that's, it's not social justice, it's not social engineering, it's trying to deal with the issues that exist. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Adam Haywood, 2807 Fifth Avenue, again. Uh, it is social justice because you want to take stuff away from me to give to somebody else for poverty. That's exactly what it is, and that's wrong. That's called theft. And I don't want to live in Omaha, so I don't want to deal with their things. That's why I live over Sir, here. Sir, address the council. You don't address the people, and the audience will have you removed. 
Well, you've already heard what I said, so. I did. I'm Barry Cleveland, uh, 1435 McPherson. I'm here to speak in favor of the, of the plan. I served as the uh, chairman of the Transportation Steering Committee uh, throughout the process. And uh, as far as the, some of the cost savings that, we're, that we hope to achieve, um, goes back to uh, those who uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. Uh, with transportation corridors, if you can outline and plan the corridors and preserve the corridors, they're much uh, less inexpensive to acquire um, or to develop. So that is some of the cost savings, at least in the transportation area. So thank you. Any questions? And do we have a motion on the table? We do, but we didn't get our discussion yet. All right. I, I just wanted to say that we discussed this a little bit this afternoon, and um, <clears throat> I, I do support the resolution. This is this basically at, at this time. This is a uh, um, an announcement of support uh, from the city, and the city council, for this collaboration of, of many different entities that are coming together to make our, our region better. Uh, it does not um, allocate any funds or staff or or in any way. Um, um, take costs uh, or anything from the city. It's just a general statement of support uh, at this time. Now, as we go forward, there may be some costs or there may be some, some people uh, that would be involved and that would be a part two that would also come before the council. But at this time, this is just a general statement of, hey, that's a good idea. Let's, let's, let's continue the collaboration and the discussion. So um, on the basis of that, I will support this resolution. Any other discussion? I don't think it's harmful to plan and to work together and to have a discussion amongst the various entities. They're all still, including your city government, are still elected by you. Decisions, you, you, you elect the leaders, they make the decisions, that doesn't change. There, I, there was some folks who had a concern that this was a takeover by a, a world government or the United Nations or something like that. And no, it's, it's cities and within eight counties that are next to one another and the people live next to one another. And on the one hand, we talk about all the challenges we have, about economic development, about finding good jobs, having a tax structure, having roads to get people places. But on the other hand, some folks would suggest that we don't plan and that all those apparently will sort themselves out. I, I disagree. I think there are plenty of examples uh, that would prove that point. And tonight, though, I, I look forward to that discussion because it is a very interesting discussion about the, the meat of it. But tonight isn't about the documents we got this afternoon. Those are for the next phase about what we might do uh, going forward. Tonight's vote is about the documents we've received over months, really. I think about a year ago, I was involved in some of the interviews, and I think many of my colleagues were. They interviewed a lot of folks around eight counties, not just elected people. Um, we've had that information for quite some time, and tonight's vote is, as, as an idea, do we want to keep going forward or not? It's just a statement of intent. We're not getting to the nitty gritty. I look forward to that discussion, though, because I, I think it, it's an important one to have. I'd just like to say we've already had some success as a city and working in a more regional manner with our advanced Southwest Iowa and in fact a, a project that we should see uh, break ground here real soon with the XLT project was a direct result of collaboration through the partnership with Omaha and the surrounding counties. Um, that was a project that we may never have gotten the lead on had it not been part of a regional group. So. I think looking at the area as a region is, is definitely beneficial to the taxpayers and, and to the economic development of council us. So I will support this. I'm all in favor of planning. Uh, I built a lengthy military career based on planning. And so I, I think I understand the, the process. And, and in doing that, that planning, you have to be care, paying careful attention to the words that are being applied not only in the supporting plans, but also in figuring out where you think you're going and what the costs will be. And, uh, and in the first steps for, for implementation of this compact, 
uh, it, it says that uh, uh, that committees and staffs will be uh, will be formed. That there will be uh, a commitment to attending meetings, providing staff, and to the extent possible, financial support. Uh, <coughs> I, I understand the, the point that regional cooperation is essential if we are going to grow economically. An awful lot of, this, of these words go well beyond economic growth, and I might endeavor to point out that the XLT project was worked out and brought to approval without this compact. So it can be done when people of goodwill are coming together to uh, to enter into those discussions, and uh, and and I understand that this is supposedly just a general broad guideline. We said the same thing about bluffs tomorrow, 2030, and all of the work on the on the council agendas since the passage of that have been pretty much in lockstep with that plan. But now, if you look at the details within this vision document. It looks like we may have to go back and relook at Bluffs 2030 because it takes a different view on some things. So this is where we need to think about the underlying documents, where we think we're headed, and why. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nay. Resolution 15-72, authorizing staff changes for the Permits and Inspections Division of the Public Works Department. Motion, Motion to, approve. to approve. Second. Discussion. I will say, I know I'm the minority here, but I was not in favor of <coughs> switching to an active inspection. Um, I do think the permit technician is a great idea. It kind of spreads out the job from having it all on them. Um, so even though I think that's a great idea and I fully understand, I will be voting against just because this goes along with the active program, and so to continue with that theme. And, and I respect your view. You've always had a consistent view on it, and it's it's a fair point. And uh, so I appreciate you telling us uh, the reason for how you intend to vote on that. I intend to, uh, it's probably no surprise, I intend to support uh, uh, <coughs> staffing the, uh, the uh, active rental inspection program, but I respect those who disagree. And, and I, too, appreciate and support your, your comments. I, I, I agree with you and <coughs> concur in your position. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nay. Nay. And then for those at home, again, the vote was three to two uh, for passage. Resolution 15-73, awarding a contract to Lon Smith and Company for the return to the Fairmont Park improvement projects. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. If folks, uh, as the weather is getting nicer now, if you go up into Fairmont Park, and I'd encourage you to do it, uh, you'll notice that over the last several months, um, uh, mostly last fall, though I, I believe it started up again now, or will shortly, uh, a lot of the, the trees have been, are being thinned out, a lot of the, the junk trees that weren't there originally and that are choking out the native species that block the views in places that are supposed to have them and did originally. Uh, it's, it's cleaning up the park, and then on this specific vote, it's one part of that whole piece. It's to bring in a, a water park, and it's, it's not a pool. Uh, those are fun. Uh, those have to be manned. Those have a significant liability and insurance uh, situation. Uh, this the splash pad, imagine the one next to the current Bayless Park Fountain, writ large. Lots of them, lots of areas for parents to sit on benches and to watch their kids. It's a fantastic project. A lot of people talk about how they want places to go, want good things for the kids to do, and to have an active life with their families again, and to get back to that. A lot of people want to get back to that, and so we've heard you, and that's what we're doing. And so I support this. And I'd like to uh, point out that the um <clears throat> the, the the top bid actually came in 20 percent less than what we estimated that it would cost so that that's uh that's a, that's a great thing <laughs> any other discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. oh same sign <coughs> sure
No, I'm not against this and I'm for it. <coughs> but like I asked before, I know our city attorney said there is a master plan for all what's gone have. Has any of you guys seen that plan? We adopted the plan. The whole, so there is, I missed last meeting. No, it, no, it was a 2005. Plan. Yeah. So it was, so everybody knows, because when I asked before, I said, what is the next step we're going to do? And everybody just said, we don't know. It, it depends on the sources of money we can get, quite frankly. Okay. Uh, about half of this, this current round, the trees and the water park, are being provided by groups such as the Noon Rotary, uh, Iowa West Foundation. Uh, there's a state recreation grant that the staff was very diligent about. It's a very competitive grant that we, they managed to land for us. And about half of it will come from uh, tax, general taxation. So half of it's coming from other sources than So this taxes. is a 10-year-old plan. Has, is there any way maybe that, maybe that should be updated? Because since then, we got a lot more bike traffic and stuff like that. And was that considered back 10 years ago? It actually is a new plan, the 2005 plan we're not doing anymore. That, for a variety of reasons, it, it turned out to be far too expensive. Plus, the riverfront uh, park took priority, which is our front door, probably makes sense. I think it does. Um, it, we're into a new plan now called the Return to Fairmont Park plan, and it, it, it depends on how much money we're able to find. We're, we're not going to fund it fully from taxes because we don't have it. But uh, we're doing it as best we can. Uh, originally, before this uh, reemergence of this idea of doing stuff with, from Fairmont, because so many people told us they wanted it, um, it wasn't in the plan at all. That 2005 plan's literally been on the shelf. And if it hadn't been for lots of people speaking out and advocating for it, it'd probably be 20 years before we'd even start this. We got, you know, a, a journey of 1,000 miles begins with a single step. And I, th I think we've made at least a few miles headway into it. No, no, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm for this. I've been waiting forever for this to be done because I'm talking about even in the 70s when I lived on Park Avenue, the park was deteriorating. Mm -hmm. and that's why I, I want to know how it now. What's the next? What you know? What is the next phase? Right like now, you got two phases going on. You got cutting of the. A lot of screaming. Scrubs and what I would suggest, What's sir, going on, you know, is Greg? is you just um, <clears throat> contact the Parks Department and ask to see a copy of the master plan, Parks plan that we adopted in the last year or so, and that way you can see everything that it, it's just a plan. A plan is just, a plan. No, but I just wanted to know what what, what was our next step. You, you know, you you also you know the the Parks the Parks and Rec uh, we have a, a commission uh, made up of, of, of residents who meet with uh, the Parks and Rec director Larry Foster, and their meetings are public and and we post them online. And if you if you're not able to access that, shoot me a message, Bruce, and I'll. I or any of us will tell you how to get that or we'll get you a copy yeah. and you can attend they, they, they get into detail at those and I highly recommend you go and then you can, you're able to give input directly from the get-go I just like yeah. to know if that'd be I'm going love see, your input yeah, check I'm with going to see this done before I'm dead yeah. you know that's, <laughs> that's actually a good suggestion though the, the Parks uh, Commission meets once a month and and that would be posted on the city's website so just check and see when their next meeting is and open you, meeting yeah. yeah it's an open meeting Butch, okay. five, butch five minutes is up on this side. Okay. So. You'll get more later. You get more later. <coughs> All right. Um, I believe we've had that vote, so I think we're on 6D, please. No, we have a motion. We need the vote. We voted. No, we already no, we voted. voted. He just got up after we voted. Oh, okay. Sorry. <coughs> Do you have the vote total? I, th I believe it was you. Spoke unanimous, out wasn't yeah. 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 Okay. Resolution 15-74, authorizing the mayor to execute Iowa Department of Transportation pre-construction pre agreement number 2015-4-210 two, two, in connection with the I-80 interstate improvements. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Resolution 15-75, appointing Bankers Trust Company of Des Moines, Iowa, to serve as paying agent, bond register, and transfer agent, approving the paying agent and bond registrar <coughs> and transfer agent agreement and authorizing the execution of the agreement. 
along with E1 resolutions, resolution 15-76 authorizing and providing for the issuance of $8,145,000 general obligation bond series 2015A and levying a tax to pay said bonds <coughs> because they are a combined, combined resolution two and one. Discussion, or I'm sorry, is there a motion? Motion to approve uh, resolution 1575 and 1576. Second. Discussion. These votes are part of the process of, of appointing some of the procedural uh, banks that need to be a part of um, uh, a lot of the bonds that were at, I believe, what, 4% or higher? Four and a half. Four and a half. Um, that otherwise would have cost us that over the next couple of years. Uh, the, the mayor was able to uh, suggested that we rebid them out, and uh, so we're going to end up paying half. Other folks that bought the bonds, buying out the people that we're going to get four and a half, and now they're going to get, in some cases, under two percent. I think, saving several hundred thousand, as I recall. Four hundred. Four hundred and some thousand. Thank you for the taxpayer. And this is part of the procedural process. I know sometimes it's hard to understand, but th this is what this is. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-77, appointing Bankers Trust Company of Des Moines, Iowa, to serve as paying agent, bond registrar, and transfer agent, approving the paying agent and bond registrar and transfer agent agreement, and authorizing the execution of the agreement, and F1, Resolution 15-78, authorizing and providing <coughs> for the issuance of $3,620,000 general obligation refunding bonds, Series 2015B, and levying a tax to pay said bonds. Is there a motion? Motion to approve <coughs> resolution 1577 and 1578. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15 79, designating City Attorney Richard Wade or Mayor Matthew J. Walsh as the person authorized to sign documents and matters between the City and the United States Department of Agriculture. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15 80 of the City Council approving the strategic plan for the City of Council Bluffs. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? Uh, reading over this, this document, uh, again, I, I think that a lot of good, good work was put into this document, a lot of good faith was put into it. And there's some, frankly, some very good ideas incorporated in it, such as an intent to endeavor to preserve our city's past and to revise the, uh, the capital improvement <coughs> plan process. Both of those excellent ideas. But uh, again, words uh, words mean things, and it's some of the other words that that uh, caused me some concern. And, uh, and in initiatives uh, under this document, uh, it is said that, uh, that we ought to develop new funding sources and that, uh, uh, that, we're, uh, that we ought to uh, build a major indoor field house. And that's an initiative at, uh, that will be brought to Ford at some point. And again, words, uh, but in, in approving this strategic plan, we're voting we're voting, voicing approval for those initiatives contained within that plan. But in the, in the art of good strategy and planning, the plans typically inform the strategy. And, uh, and then the strategy works back down to revise the, the planning. And I, I would recommend that, that uh, <coughs> with all the good work that has gone into this document, that, uh, that we study the, the process for going forward with strategic planning in, in the Ford in, in the future to ensure that uh, our, our strategies are informed by, by our results that, that we've been achieving and then how those plans in turn are going to be periodically updated to, uh, to reinform the strategy. So again, my compliments for, uh, for all the works that has gone into this. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nay. And those at home, the vote was four to one. Applications for permits and cancellations. 
Motion to approve 7A, 1 through 4, inclusive. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Well, Madam Clerk, were there any requests from citizens to be heard? None received. Anybody from the audience like to address the council? Bruce Kelly, 864 McKenzie Avenue. I came in a little late and it was a heated discussions going on and everything else like that. And what you guys get paid, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you bring up we don't do it for the money Bruce <laughs> sure and do. the other deal collective bargaining I am a union Democrat which all of you know and I believe in collective bargaining and which everything else and then you brought up cola with its cost of living and everything else I got $21 more than half of it went for they took for more my medical went up and then with all the increases and stuff and everything else that house taxes car insurance and everything else all they did was help cover $21 of the hundreds of dollars that I'm paying out more per month than I should have and then the city budget and everything else you said you didn't raise it is raised because the state of Iowa raised the residential part of it so it isn't that you didn't raise and that's the point that I just like to say that you're not you're still you're bringing in more because the state of Iowa allowed the housing part of it to go up what is 1.3 percent approximately I yeah think. so there was a there was a raise 1.3 percent I think Bruce on a hundred thousand dollar house that equated to uh, about twenty three dollars um, annual increase it is a raise people don't understand because they say well we didn't increase the taxes there no is that's a two sided I, formula it's a levy and valuation no. and if either side increases then the net taxes you pay increase and in this case the state rollback at this point in time is actually rolling forward the 1.3 percent yeah that, that's what I meant yeah. and I think that's where people got under the influence well our taxes are going to be exactly the same but that's where it should have been mentioned the state mandate raised it but we don't have to raise the our 17 something we're paying a per thousand 1775 1775 but they're going to be I'm going to be paying probably because I'm under 200,000 with my two prop with my two probably two hundred thousand dollars so I'm I'm still paying more and that's where I think where you get in the talk where well they did go up but and stuff like that that's where I think a lot of this conversation went went to the awry when it's all of a sudden yeah it did go up but you guys didn't put up your portion but the state raised it so you are getting more money so that about, you know about seven hundred six thousand dollars I think is the you know case. and there's a backfill from the state uh, in the amount of one million dollars and that backfill is based upon the goodwill of the legislature based upon their promise at the time that the uh, tax legislation was passed I mean that's like on the uh, they said they'd pay for your commercial, <coughs> tax commercial, like commercial and roll back. they promised they'll pay it forever but they've never kept that's, that promise that's on what anything I said. else in 150 I said this <laughs> at the a year ago at the county board and they said yeah the state owed them 800 and some thousand dollars and I basically said yeah the checks in the mail <laughs> and that's what I, 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 people have to understand just because Iowa says they're going to roll back all this and they're going to give you back your tax money you we're going to have to fight for it or you, you're never going to see it by the way the budget says it goes forward assume that we don't necessarily get that money 
it's very conservative in that sense. So if anything, we'll be pleasantly surprised. This, this, is, yeah. this is a very conservative budget you, because of the points you raise. Yeah. Because it, I know I brought it up at the county almost a year ago, and they said they owed them 800 some dollars in commercial taxes and stuff. And I go, yeah. And I just looked at them, and I smiled, and they just looked at me, and I go, are you really going to think you're going to get it? And they just. I did, I did learn something new, though, Bruce, a couple weeks ago, that it is a standing appropriation. And so what that means is that both the House and the Senate have to vote to take it away, and the governor has to sign it. And so um, not that that couldn't happen. In tough budget years, it probably will happen. But it's a little more um, substantial than than what I initially thought it was, was just a year-to-year -year type deal. And, and the House has committed for this year that it will not take that away, that it intends to go forward with that. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Dave Flavin, 3606 Avenue E. Um, with your budget, and that, you know, you have in the community, and, th and that's great that you got that you make more money than most do, but you've got people making $8, $10, $14 an hour that haven't had raises in years, five, six, 10 years, and you're asking to, for your employees to get raises too? You know, you need to look at your, your, the residents here. And the 24%, put it in front of the voters to give you the 24% raises. Ask them and I was explain to them why you deserve a 24% raise. Don't do like the federal government did years ago and give themselves 33%. And that. Also, last two weeks ago, I was not here, but I heard that you had a $2 million bond issue that, was, that you approved. You put out $500,000 for Playland Park work to be done. Tell me you don't, you're not, having problems with the budget. You're put, spending way too much money for something you shouldn't be doing. And just, just for clarification, there was nothing in that bond issue related to Playland Park. Um, it did, there was monies for parks, um, which included the Mid-City Trail and included Fairmont Park, but nothing for Playland Park. It doesn't make a difference. You're gonna move that money to where you wanna move it to. Let's get realistic. Um, Playland is a TIF, and by Iowa bonding law, without a public hearing approval, we can't just move it there, and so that we can't do it in that particular case. You're right, there is some flexibility if it's not in an urban renewal area, but in this case, Playland Park is. Bond councils told us that uh, because it's in an urban renewal area, it needs its own separate hearing, and so if we were um, actually, we approved a $2 million bond issue for the street down there, but it wasn't included in that bond issuance. Um, we pulled it back based on the uh, petition from, uh, from the area property owner, or from whoever signed the petition, um, because there was potential that within 30 days they could um, bring a court proceeding in, in challenge our determination that that the petition wasn't valid and so we pulled that off the current bond issue but they did vote to approve two million uh, for playland park we don't know that we're going to need that yet and we're hoping to get what's called a rise grant which is an economic development grant from the state of iowa um, there's potential we could do that so i don't want to completely mislead you but the bond issue that was issued does not include anything for Playland Park. Okay, is the bond, that two million dollar new bond, does that have to go in front of the voters or do you guys can make the decision to, to it's, issue it, a bond? It's subject to what's called a reverse referendum and we, we publish it, the public has 10 days um, to bring a petition. If you remember recent newspaper articles, that did happen. They need to have, I believe, 30% of the number of the people that voted in the previous election, that number on the petition. That would have been 610 signatures on the petition. The petition they brought had 612 signatures. I think 29 we found were not Council Bluffs residents 
or didn't put their address down, which is a requirement, their name and address. And so um, the petition was determined to be invalid. We went ahead and voted to appropriate the money, um, but we did not include that in the bond issuance. All right, thank you. Thank you. Just uh, looking over the CIP for, uh, for FY16, uh, I, I noted a uh, uh, line item PR uh, which is uh, parks, recreation, and public property, uh, 1708, and that provides uh, 2.4 million dollars uh, for uh, for Playland Park uh, Phase Two, and and I would presume that, in, in as much as that's in parks and recreation, that's not the the public works uh, portion of that. So. Well, they couldn't hear. Uh, people can't hear what you're saying now. I, I'm sorry. I noted that that in the capital improvement plan, that there's a uh, item under parks and recreation, not not under public works, but under parks and recreation, for an allocation of uh, of 2.4 million dollars for uh, for Playland Park. So arguably, that's not for for infrastructure costs. That's that's for something else. And uh, be looking forward to seeing the details on that. And that's phase two of the Playland Park, Hannafin Park uh, development, which is to develop a, a landing area at the end of the pedestrian bridge. Um, but that wasn't included in the bond issue you referenced. It, it's in the capital improvement plan, which is planning ahead for future expenditures, but was not in the, in the bonding. And, and spending money on, on the West End uh, parks is important, not just in other areas. And this, I, I think it is a matter of peop people in every part of the city pay taxes. And I do think for a long time that uh, we could have perhaps spent more on the West compared to what they're putting in. And this does that. This does that. And, you know, as to the other, we haven't voted a race through, but, you know, I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about the vast number of people who can't afford to sit up here because they can't afford to take time off from their job to do this for free. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the precedent. If we really want this to stay representative into the future, especially if, if you don't think it's representative now, keep making it impossible for the vast majority of people to even be possible to sit up here. And if, and if you think that's good for good government and representation of everybody's views, I guess I just respectfully disagree with you. And I, and I think that the council has always been cognizant of the fact that um, many people have less. Uh, you know, our, if you look at our community, um, it actually is one of the reasons why our levy rate is higher. I was uh, kind of surprised that Des Moines levy rate, I think, was $16.93. Ours is seventeen seventy-five, And the reason for that is they have substantial commercial development. Um, they can spread it out over a wider tax base, which is one of the strategies and tax that the council's tried to take over the years is to increase that tax base. Um, and ultimately, if that happens, then we can lower the levy for everybody. If, if you keep the tax base constricted, those people in the tax base have to pay more because, as, as Bruce pointed out earlier, every expense that he has is going up every year. And the city's similar to an individual. I'll, I'll, our salaries primarily are employees, but their utilities, their petroleum, they're, they're the staples that individuals pay for and uh, so that we can keep it affordable for those that, that can't afford even affordability. We need to, to be cognizant of it, but, uh, but to try and spread out that tax base. The other revenue sources that's been alluded to several times are what's called user fees. We could put it on your property taxes um, and that would be the easy, simple way. But, but why not put it on building permit fees for businesses that are building buildings? Um, why not put it uh, on gaming fees for people that have enough money to go to the casinos? And so it's specific uses that, that get an associated tax. Those are the other revenue sources we're talking about. Spreading that out so that we can keep property taxes reasonable. Um, in, in those people that have more than others that can afford to pay those things, that's where, 
where more of the money would come from in the future without increasing property taxes. Um, I, I'm telling you, it, it was not easy to keep it at $17.75, um, even though health insurance stayed flat, even though FICA stayed flat, even though um, IPER stayed flat, even though police and fire retirement went down 10%. Last year, the former finance director budgeted to spend down reserves in those areas. And so this year, when I budgeted the appropriate cost, we found police and fire retirement went up 29% what we had to to charge people because last year they under budgeted and even though it went down 10% in cost the actual levy needed to be 29% higher than the previous year and so um, it's, it's a struggle getting at 1775 I mean it I'm not hiding it from anybody in the general fund we're five hundred and sixty three thousand dollars short based on projections um, for the fiscal year that starts July 1 15 and ends June 30th, 16. And so we're going to need to make some tough decisions sooner rather than later. And the reason I say it that way, if you're $573,000 short on July 1 and you don't do anything until December 31st, then you've got to double that cut so that you can get to the number you get to. So you've got to make a million dollars plus in cuts. And so, um, Again, we're evaluating revenues. Um, we have instituted significant cost-saving measures over the last year, um, and things like sending one billing for for city services could save the taxpayers fifty thousand dollars a year in mailing expense. And uh, we're centralized purchasing supplies, which they've never done before. We've instituted a cell phone policy that that saved, frankly, $2,200 a month. And so it's not huge numbers, but when you start accumulating them together, it becomes real money. And so, um, again, we want to see where we come in uh, June 30th of this year, what what the budget for 2015 look like, and reevaluate. And, and then we may, frankly, have to make cuts we don't want to make. but. It doesn't make sense to me to have negative spending uh, going into the future. And, and the finance director, previous finance director, I asked his counsel, I said, what do you think we ought to have for reserve balances? He thought $15 million was adequate. That's about 25% of the general fund operating. Uh, we have a little over 30% today. We're about $21 million. So we can sustain it for a short time, but that's not the way to to um, prudently plan going forward. So um, we need something that we can go forward, keep taxes as low as possible. So we're looking at everything we can look at to do that. And, and we hear what you're saying. It, it, honestly, um, you know, I, at, at one point I was 1140 labor and on Friday night I got a big Samson. And, and that was a big treat for me to get a big Samson. And so I, I, we hear where you're coming from. Name and address for the record. Deanne Hughes, 1420 North 21st Street. Um, just make this real quick because I know you're all tired. I know I am. Um, just wanted you guys to know that I would not want to do what you do for $600 a month. Um, I know talking to you guys that you spend a lot of hours agonizing over your agendas, over the policies, over all the stuff that's coming forward, and you're trying to make the best decisions for Council Bluffs. And I wouldn't want to do it for that amount of money, especially when you have um, the bashing going on that's been going on tonight, I just, I, it hurts me to hear that we have one person who doesn't really have the city's best interests at heart. And I want the rest of you guys to know that I appreciate your um, caring and that you guys put a lot of thought into this. And going forward, I know you guys will be making good decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I just want to apologize to my fellow council members for my coughing all night and to the audience. I probably should have stayed home, but I'm really committed to being at these meetings and casting those votes that matter. So I, I do want to apologize. I know it was, it was very disruptive. 
um, and I did have to leave the room a few times, so I want to apologize to everybody for that. But the other thing I wanted to say is that I wanted to thank the Canesville writers. Um, I read the story in the newspaper, and it was so heartwarming to see people come out to help their fellow neighbors. And uh, so Al Ruby, Gary Elgin, Robbie Sears, Roger Fries, Don Wolford, Jim Falk, and Cindy Ruby. What you did for Zane McGlade is, was not just neighborly, but it was good-hearted. And um, I want to thank Zane McGlade for his service to our country. And I want to thank the uh, Canesville Riders for coming out and helping that family that was in need. It, it really was a heartwarming story, and I, I was glad to read it. So and We would hope that kind of in that same vein, the, uh, the war memorial that's been so delayed in, in moving forward, um, we hope we get a good start in the spring to get that done. The uh, Bricklayers Union has generously donated their time, but as you can imagine, when when it's donated time, it has to be their spare time. And so uh, the weather kind of got them last fall, and, and we got good weather ahead, so we hope things progress quickly and we can get that completed and opened up. Wonderful. Excellent. I appreciate that. I was going to send you an email about that. Thank so you. I appreciate that. Well, we've been working on it uh, several times in the last two or three months. We've had meetings regarding that. And, and when it warmed up a little bit in January, we even talked about it. But uh, um, the difficulty, again, is because the project cost exceeded the <coughs> financial support for the community, and I want people to know that it's not too late to, to make a donation if you're so inclined, but the, the financial support um, was not substantial enough to pay the the project cost and so um, to help subsidize that we sought out the help of the bricklayers union <coughs> and asked them to do the block lane and the brick lane uh, gratis and, and they kindly acquiesced to doing that um, but again they're doing it on their available time frame which has further delayed the process but, um, Various veterans groups have been asking me about the, the project, and, and they, they have some uh, constructive suggestions that may help uh, lower the, the, some of the costs associated with that. So uh, I look forward to, uh, to the, the plan being formulated, and, and, uh, and I'll suggest that uh, the leadership of those veterans organizations set, to, set out a time where we could possibly talk with, uh, with either you or the appropriate people in public works. Always happy to do that. And thank you for letting me. I, I wasn't aware that uh, the union had so graciously stepped up for for the veterans, and so. <coughs> Bruce, you got it. I'm oh, glad, thank you, know, you for letting us know. You know, you got one more, huh? Yep. Number one is local one, Omaha bricklayers. They taught me how to lay brick. My dad was a mason for 58 years, master mason, and everything like this. They do a lot of projects around to help with the community's lay brick. I have, when I was younger, gave it up, didn't want that kind of lifestyle. And I know a lot of you, your dad was a steam fitter, my brother, yeah. steam fitter. Yeah. We, I'm it, the yeah. first one out of the family that yeah. didn't go back into construction. I went somewhere else. So, and here's where you're going to run into. It's springtime, jobs are starting up, it's going to be hard for them, but I got to say, if there's a cooler down there, that <laughs> will help a lot. <laughs> and if somebody says, Bruce, bring a cooler with some ice and some beverages for them, I'll do it. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, we're adjourned. Thank you. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council Plus Savings Bank, 
hometown banking the way it used to be.